All right, so number four, you have P over four plus 18 equals 56. Can everybody see the TV? Okay, so we're gonna subtract the 18 over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. All right, so subtract the 18 over. So then that gives you P over 4 equals whatever that I'm on mental math is not working today. All right, so that gives you 38. And then you multiply both sides by 4. Or, well, so if you're going to do it with the cross multiplying, right, technically you put 38 over 1. So then you do P times 1, which is just P, and then you have 38 times 4, which is 152. Or at that point, you can just multiply both sides by 4, which will give you the same thing. Is number 8. So you have negative 7a minus 14 over negative 21 is equal to 3. I'm just going to put my 3 over 1. That way when I cross multiply, it works out. So we have 3 times 20, negative 21, which is going to give us negative 63. And then we have negative 7a minus 14 times 1 which is just going to stay the same because we're multiplying by 1. Then you add your 14. Right, and then you get negative 7a is equal to negative 49 and divide by negative 7. So then a equals 7. Wait, what did you negative You multiplied it you do negative 21 times 3 to get negative 63. So you do not remember that? It's a lot more sense than what I did. Okay, that's also one of the Wait, could you put that in the last term? No. Because it's equal, not you're not multiplying. They're equal to each other. So you cannot reduce them down. Okay. Or else that's going to mess you up. Well, whatever I didn't mess me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number 10. All right, so before I start, I'm going to go ahead and do 6n minus 18n, right, since we have common uh, or like terms there. So 6 minus 18 is going to give you a negative 12n over 4. So like on the left, you could reduce that if you wanted to and not even have to worry about cross multiplying. Um, or you can cross multiply it. So we'll do it two ways. So negative 12n over 4 is also equal to negative 3n. So you can do it like that and just divide by negative 3 and get n equals negative 4. Or you can cross multiply it still. So 12 times 4 is 48, not 36. So you get 48 equals negative 12n and then you divide by the negative 12. So you can do it either way. You don't always have to cross multiply. I mean, you do, it's more effective to do it when you've got something with like a binomial there. But. So either one of those methods would work for number 10. All right, number 12, we have 4x plus 7 over 2x plus 8 is equal to 7 over two. So we're going to definitely have to cross multiply here. So that's going to give us seven times two X plus eight is equal to two times four X plus seven. So then we have to use the distributive property. So that's going to give us 14 X plus 56 is equal to eight X plus 14. Right, so I'm going to subtract my 8x over. 
So 14 minus 8 is 6x. And then we subtract the 56. I'm out of room. So then 6x is negative 42. And then divide by 6. So x equals negative 7. Are you guys figuring out where you've been making mistakes? Okay. All right, number 14 um, works basically the same way as number 12. So negative 2a plus 5 over negative a plus 1 is equal to 7 over 4. So again, we're going to cross multiply. So that's going to give us 4 times negative 2a plus 5 is equal to 7 times negative a plus 1. So again, distribute on both sides, which simplifies to negative 8a um, plus 20 equals negative 7a plus 7. So add the 7a over, so you get negative a plus 20 equals 7, subtract 20, and you get negative a. And then when you divide by the negative 1, you get a equals positive 13. Any other questions on number 14? All right, number 16. So these are the ones where we end up with some quadratic equations to solve. All right, so again, we are cross multiplying. So we get 4x times x plus 4 is equal to negative 6 times x minus 2. So distribute which would give us 4x squared plus 16x is equal to negative 6x plus 12. So we want to set it equal to 0. Um, so we're going to add the 6x to both sides. And then we're also going to subtract the 12 over, which doesn't really have anything to subtract to, so it's just going to get stuck on the end there. So you get 4x squared plus 22x minus 12 is equal to 0. No. 16 plus 6, right? Yeah. Oh, I did 16 plus 16. That's why I said that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so then... I would divide everything by 2 so you have smaller numbers to work with um, since you've got 4, 22, and 12. So if you divide out a 2, that's going to give you 2x squared plus 11x minus 6. So you can factor it or you can use a quadratic formula. Do we have a preference? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Factor. Okay. So... We're going to do 2 times 6, which is 12. And then we need factors of 12 that add up to 11. Yep, so we have a positive 12 and a negative 1. So we replace that 11 with that 12x and minus 1x. So we get 2x squared plus 12x. Minus 1x, and then minus 6. So then we group those two, and then we group the second two. So 
So then we pull out greatest common factors from each group. So from the first one, we can take out a 2x, which leaves us with x plus 6. And then from the second one, we need to pull out a negative 1. So we're left with that same x plus 6 inside. So then you get 2x minus 1 because you take the coefficients. And then you have x plus 6. <clears throat> and then you set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to do that up here at the top. So 2x minus 1 equals 0, so you add the 1 to both sides, so you get 2x equals 1, and then divide by 2, so x is 1 half, and then also x plus 6 equals 0, so you just have to subtract the 6, and x is also equal to 6, and that's how you get two solutions for that one. It is negative 6, sorry. Um, x minus 7 over x plus 36 is equal to 2 over 5x. So again, we're going to cross multiply. Um, so that's going to give us um, 2 times x plus 36 is equal to 5x times x minus 7. So we get 2x plus 72 is 5x squared minus 35. And then again, we want everything over there with that 5x squared. So I'm going to 35x, sorry. So we're going to move the 2x over. <coughs> uh, excuse me. And then we're also going to move over that 72. So then we get 5x squared minus 37x minus 72 is equal to 0. So I don't know about you guys, but my first instinct is to do a quadratic formula for this one. Um, because you're going to have really large numbers to factor with, which is a pain. So um, for the quadratic formula, we know that A would be what? 5, B would be negative 37, and C is negative 72. So it's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C, all divided by 2A. So, that's fun. Um, Alright, so then 37 squared is... So we get 1369 plus 1440 over 10. So... That is so 37 plus or minus the square root of 2809 all over 10. Can you take the square root of that? Look at that, you can, that's 53. So you get 37 plus 53 over 10, plus or minus, sorry. So 37 plus 53 gives you 90 over 10, and then 37 minus 53 gives you negative 16 over 10. And then you reduce those, so you get x equals 9, and divide it by 2, so negative 8 over 5 would be your two answers for this one. All right, so today we are solving radical equations. So equations that have square roots in them. Right, so for example, it's an equation that would look something like this. All 
All right, so how do we get rid of square roots? What's like the opposite of taking a square root of something? Squaring it, right? So it's just, it's like how multiplication and division are opposites of each other. Adding and subtracting, opposites of each other. Square roots and squaring stuff, opposites of each other. So if we square both sides of this equation, that's going to cancel out that square root on the left side. So we're just going to square it and square that. So on the left side, since we're squaring that square root, we're just going to be left with what's inside. So that's just going to give us x plus 5. And 8 squared is 64. And then subtract 5 from both sides. So x equals 59. A tiny bit, but not terribly harder. The same general idea of you have to square both sides applies. All right, so then let's do another example. So sometimes we have a variable on that right side. So let's say we have the square root of x plus 5 is equal to x plus 5. So what that means is we're still going to square both sides. Right, so on that left side, that's just going to leave us with x plus 5. It is going to be a quadratic equation. All right, they're, I told you guys, they're not going away. We love them. Why? Because they're fun. People that love math. <laughs> All right, so yes, that means since we have x plus 5 squared, we have to FOIL it, right? So if you think that means we're doing x plus 5 times x plus 5, right? That's what squaring something means. So we're going to basically do x plus 5 times x plus 5. Those two things mean the same thing. So I'm going to move this down so I have a little bit of room. So we're going to FOIL. So x times x is x squared. Outside gives us x times 5, which is a plus 5x. Inside, we also get a plus 5x. At the end, we get a plus 25. So then that simplifies down to x squared plus 10x plus 25. And now, what do we have to do? Move it over and set it equal to zero. So subtract the x and subtract the 5. So that means we have x squared plus 9x plus 20 is equal to zero. All right, what do you think the easiest way to solve this one's going to be? I would factor this one. Yeah, factors of 20 that add up to 9 would be 5 and 4. Yeah. So, but again, if you can factor it, factor it. If not, quadratic formula. It's always going to work. Because I subtracted from this side to set this side equal to 0. And moved it over here. I moved it over to the right side, technically, okay. but then I just put my zero on the left because it doesn't really matter where it is. Ah! Chance, kill it. Chance, kill it. Somebody kill it. I don't like spiders. So, um, again, we're going to factor it. So factors of 20 that add up to 9 are going to be 5 and 4. 
and then we set both of our factors equal to zero. So we get x equals negative five and x equals negative four. Wait, what would happen? <laughs> uh, I factored this, mm -hmm. which gave me this. Okay. And then I set both of my factors equal to zero. And then you subtract 5 from both sides, which gives you negative 5. I got the right And you answer. subtract 4 from both sides and get negative 4. I just, I put the extra step in there. What extra I step? Oh, you X like. squared plus 5x plus 4x plus 20. And then I take, I just set the step. Yeah. Plus yeah. Plus I mean, but that's fine, though. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. Answer. Yeah, but when you don't have a number in front of x squared, you can just jump straight to I don't know this. Why I do that every single time. It's not a bad habit to have. Really? Because then you remember. Yeah. All right, Abby did that. Clear up where we were. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. As long as you don't have anything in front of this x squared. You can do that. Was like this was the very first method we learned. Okay. And I always, yeah, it's, been it's been a while, yeah. Because I feel like that's so much faster to me. I mean, I, I just always add that extra step so I didn't realize that you could just have to Yeah, you can just skip it. I didn't. I thought you guys have seen me do that several times. Oh, you have. I don't know. I just. I mean, that's what I always do. I always do it. I just don't really remember. Okay. Like, I remember this, but I don't remember. Square root of 6y plus 7 is going to be equal to y minus 2. So, um, again, what are we going to do first? Square. Square both sides. So that means on the left, we're just going to have 6y plus 7. And on the right, we technically have to foil that. I always have to write it out or else I get messed up in my head. Um, so that's going to be y squared minus 2y minus another 2y plus 4. So that's going to simplify down to y squared minus 4y plus 4. Then we have to move our 6y and our 7 over. So then we get y squared minus 10y minus 3 equals 0. So can we factor this one? No, right? There's no factors of 3 that will give us 10. So what method do we have to use? The quadratic formula. All right, so for our quadratic formula, A would be... 1, B would be negative 10, C is negative 3. So it's negative B, so positive 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus 4 times A times C, all divided by 2A. So that's going to give us 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 plus 12 over 2. So then 10 plus or minus the square root of 112 all over 2. So again, my non-honor students, wait, 